What's up? I'm William, developer advocate at OneSignal, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up email using our new OneSignal pastor. All right, now you may be wondering, when should I use the OneSignal mail pastor? That's quite simple. Use the OneSignal mail pastor if you are looking for the quickest and easiest way to get started, if you're looking to consolidate mail providers, or if you're looking to save money. Now, if you're already using one of our email partners like SendGrid or Mailgun or Mandrel, uh, then you'll want to go ahead and configure your email with that because you're already set up with that. But in any other case, I would highly recommend getting started with the new OneSignal mail pass through, and then you can always migrate to a third party solution in the future. Let's go ahead and jump into the video just to kind of see what this looks like. Before we can get started with email, we first need to enable it. I have a application here that I'm going to be using as a demonstration for this video. Uh, it already has email configured, but I can show you how to configure it yourself uh, in your app. So what you do from the dashboard of your application, what you'll want to do is click on settings and you'll see it's going to take you to the settings page and the first page is going to be platforms. This is the one that we want. Now, in my case, we'll see that email is already active. That's because I've already uh, activated it for uh, demonstration purposes. Uh, but in your case, it won't be active. You will click this activate button. So um, once you click that activate button, uh, you're going to be presented with a platform selection page, which I will show in a moment. For the purposes of this video, we are going to select the one signal platform. Go ahead and select continue and you'll see here we have a small form that needs to be filled out before we can complete the activation of email. The first question is simply asking, do I already have my own domain name uh, that I would like to associate my emails to? Uh, in this case, uh, I don't have my own domain, so I'm going to select no. However, if you do have your own domain name that you want to use, we suggest you select yes and configure your own domain. Next, we need to know how we can reach you. So just put in your email. Now, the next question is simply asking, have the people who are on that email list given permission to be contacted by you? And again, this goes to ensure higher deliverability. Uh, it's very important that we are uh, only sending emails to people who have consented to it, uh, especially if they are marketing emails. Uh, typically, transactional emails don't um, have the same constraint. Next, we do want to know how many contacts you have. This is mainly for us so that we can kind of get a feel for how much load we can expect uh, from your account or from your app. And then the next question is uh, just getting around how many emails you think that you'll send in a month. So as you can see, I've just randomly picked a few values and I'm going to go ahead and click continue. I want to take a second to talk a little bit about delivery defaults. On this page, you see we have uh, two key pieces of information that we need to provide, the default from name and the default from email. The from name is simply the name that's going to show up uh, in the from header uh, in that email, and the default from email is the associated email to that name. So uh, we do use this information in order to uh, make sure we can send an email in the event that you don't provide a uh, from name or from email uh, in our SDK or API. Now that we've activated our email platform, we need to add our subscribers. This is required because we can only send email to those who have subscribed. You can uh, import your subscribers via a few ways. Number one, you can use uh, the CSV upload method. You can also use our API. We provide a web prompt as well as one of our SDKs. Now we're going to upload some emails using the dashboard and here we're showing what the csv format must follow uploading is quite simple we just upload a file uh, once it's complete i am going to go and review my audience to make sure that my user was added and we see it is as you can see here we do provide a way for you to create your own email templates and i have a custom template that i've built here now, uh, before I save this, there are a few things that I want to call out because they do relate to some best practices that we have for, for using email here at OneSignal. The first thing I want to show off is this right here. We have these double curly braces along with is this property name, first underscore name with a pipe, and then we specify a default. This is our uh, templating uh, syntax. So what this means is 
Uh, if there is no first name available in our data tags, then use this default value of there. So here you'll see that I have one for the first name and then I have a second for this free trial code. To send your first email after getting everything configured is quite simple. Uh, I'm going to use the API to send off my email. And all that I need to do is post a request to the notifications endpoint. And uh, in the body, I need to make sure that I specify a template ID along with the segments that I would like to uh, send this email to. So I'll go ahead and send off this request. We'll see here that it's successful. I just received the email and here it is. You see here that it inserts my name because I set a data tag first name with William. And you'll see here that this says welcome 21 uh, because I didn't set a data tag. So it uses the default value. Now that we've configured our email, it's important to talk a little bit about email warmup. It's important that you keep a good reputation as a sender. And the best way to accomplish this is using email throttling and warming up. And the way that works is you can slowly increase the volume of all of the emails that you're sending over time. The reason why you may want to increase gradually is that you're going to establish yourself as a legitimate sender. And it's important that you do this continuously, right? So that your email address doesn't go cold. So it's important to make sure that you continue to send quote unquote good emails. If you would like to learn more about email throttling and warm up, you can visit our documentation for more info.